I used to always say that when uh, whenever they talked about my initials, that my initials and Tony's initials are the same. <laughs> yes. In fact, we had come out with a annual diary for our group, and somebody had put that quote. MS was common and Dhoni and Hiramat was written below and above. You know? <laughs> <laughs> uh, Neelam, can we start? Sir, yes, sir, we are live. Okay. Uh, good evening to everyone. I'm Dr. Unkar Swami on behalf of MQ Pharmaceuticals Limited. Welcome you all in this eighth module of no thrombosis. So we are we have uh, completed a journey of seventh module and we are in eighth module with a three new interesting cases and uh, as you know uh, this uh, this in this program we are discussing a live inbox cases and we will be having very interesting discussion uh, after these cases uh, at the onset it gives me an uh, priv uh, immense privilege and honor to welcome our course director Dr M S Hiramat sir. As we all know, sir is a director at Cath Lab at Ruby Hall Clinic, Pune, in India. Uh, sir has been a former president of CSI 2017 and convener for the National Interventional Council of India of CSI from 2004 to 2006. Sir has proctored many interventional cardiologists and given live courses across the globe. Though sir is a coronary interventionalist at heart, he equally ad adept the peripheral arteries interventions like leg, carotid, and avota. And sir has also participated in some groundbreaking trials. Sir, indeed, it's a privilege to have you on this board. And uh, because of you, this program is getting success, sir. And everybody is keen to attend this program. Everybody tunes for this program every fortnightly at 7 p.m. Uh, we are highly privileged, sir, to have you every time in this program, sir. Thank you. My pleasure, too. And so thank you for organizing this meeting so consistently and so regularly. I think last few times we have had more than 1,000 uh, yes. attendees uh, on yeah. this show. Yeah. So obviously, talks about success of this meeting. But it all depends on um, the people who are presenting, actually. They are the ones who are contributing importantly to this session. So go ahead, Jabir, Jabir to be introduced now. Yeah, so, so but we feel that, sir, the keenness and the uh, enthusiasm you and Jabir, sir, and Viveka Kumar, sir, kept and bring out some important pulse of wisdom. That's the real success story of this program. So at the same time, it gives me an immense pleasure to welcome Dr. Jabir, sir. He, sir, is senior consultant and director of clinical research at Lisi Hospital, Cochin. Sir has almost two decades of uh, experience of uh, cardiology practice and sir has been well-recognized cardiologist at national and international level and participated in many conferences. Uh, sir has a very great record of a management of a complex heart disease and uh, we uh, sir has been well recognized by the peers colleagues and patients and sir's area of interest is intervention and heart failure we welcome jabir uh, uh, sir as well for this program sir has been also consistently a model moderator for last seven module we also welcome dr viveka kumar sir sir is a principal director and chief of cath lab at max heart and vascular institute delhi uh, sir has also extensive experience in the field of cardiac interventions and electrophysiology. Uh, sir's area of interest are TAVI, structural heart disease, interventional cardiology, electrophysiology devices, and sir has received nu numerous uh, international awards of excellence in the cardiology. At the same time, I welcome all the faculty for today's program who will be presenting their cases, live inbox cases. I welcome Dr. Ashfaq Ahmed, sir, from uh, a uh, AMRI Hospital uh, Mukundapur. Uh, sir is consultant cardiologist over there and sir will be presenting missing the ostium not again i also welcome dr uh, mitendra singh yadav sir from uh, max super specialty hospital delhi sir is senior consultant and interventional cardiologist sir will be presenting distal lm trifurcation lesion treated with two stent strategy i also welcome dr uh, ram sagar roy sir from paris HMRI Hospital, Patna. Sir is interventional cardiologist in Patna and sir will be presenting an interesting topic of uh, uterine artery embolization. Uh, with this, uh, I would like to hand over this session to our course director, Dr. M.S. Hiremat, sir. Sir, uh, Viveka Kumar, sir, is joining shortly. He is a meeting 
with ESC that he conveyed to us and he will be joining in a short time, sir. So over to you, sir. Dr. Omkar and good evening, everybody. So am I audible? Okay. Yes, good. sir. Good. Uh, so uh, this is all related to cath lab. So let's get into the business straight away. And I request Dr. Uh, Ashfaq Ahmed to present his case. He comes from Mukundpur. Uh, where is this located, Dr. Ashfaq? I'm sorry to ask you, but. Uh, sir, this is in Kolkata. Uh, actually, uh, I would just like to uh, make it a correction. Uh, presently, I'm posted in uh, Apollo Clinical Hospital, Kolkata. Okay. And uh, very good evening to you, sir, and all the uh, uh, senior uh, course directors and moderators. And I'm um, feeling extremely uh, privileged to be uh, on the same platform and present the case in front of you. Thank you for giving me this opportunity, sir. So shall I start with the uh, yes. case, sir? Yes. Yes. Yeah, even our moderator, sir, is also there. So you can start. Okay. Dr. Jabir, very good evening. Good evening, good evening, sir. Good evening, good evening, Dr. Sorry, we started uh, without your coming, your presence, but. No, no, I was here. Outside. I came a little early, then uh, actually, my telephone, I, <laughs> my telephone, there was no charge, so I wanted to take the <laughs> charger. Good, e good evening, uh, Dr. Jabir. Good evening. Good evening, good evening sir. So, good evening, uh, sir. Sir, it gives me immense pleasure to present the case in front of you. This was a case. Uh, uh, where I missed the ostium uh, while implanting the case. So I just uh, wanted to show you and take some uh, important uh, lessons from uh, senior consultants like you who have been doing interventions for a long, long time. Because my patient profile was, sir, uh, he was a 40-year-old male smoker, a non-diabetic patient who presented with a non st elevation MI. And uh, ejection fraction was normal, uh, drop eye was raised, and he was ha having on and off chest pain. Uh, this was uh, just uh, before the COVID era started. So we did not wait for any result of COVID. We straight away took him to the lab. And uh, uh, this was the angio, sir, uh, the short uh, right coronary artery shot, where we see that there is a, a significant disease in the ostium. This was the uh, right coronary. We have taken another right coronary shot, which I will show. And this. This was the left system. Left system had a significant disease in an LED. So we first went on with the. Uh, to. This was the right uh, coronary artery, sir, in the RAO view. So what we did, we first went on with the do, to do the left system. Uh, left system, uh, we planted a stent uh, of 3 into 38 in the mid LED, and proximally also we treated left system. The result was uh, good and acceptable. Uh, this was the stent in the uh, proximal part of the left LED. And after the post dilatation, after post dilatation, sir, uh, this was the result. We did an OCT also. I unfortunately I don't have the OCT run in the LED. Uh, this was the OCT, but I haven't managed to get the OCT images for you. It would have been better had I got it. So this was the final result in the uh, left system. Then we moved on to the uh, right system and thought it was uh, going to be an easy task. Uh, uh, only the ostium, we plan, uh, plan to uh, do only the ostium proximal part of the right guide. We took AL.75 and this was the pre-dilatation shot and here we started positioning the stent in the ostium. So uh, while we were inflating, sir, this uh, uh, the stent actually, uh, fortunately or unfortunately, whatever you say, it slipped into the 
uh, inside the RCA, proximal RCA, while inflating. And this was the check shot after we, after the stent slipped into, the ostium was uh, left uncovered. So uh, then I decided, to, as because the uh, guide had good support, but uh, maneuvering the guide uh, at the ostium while implanting the stent was getting difficult. So I put another wire in the aortic cusp and this came to mind after uh, after I missed the osteal lesion. And after putting the wire, then it was uh, it became slightly easier to tackle the ostium. And then we planted one more stent uh, instead of one, he got two in the RCA ostium. And uh, this was the uh, result after the implantation of the stent. And this was the uh, final results. So for me, sir, uh, uh, the uh, take home message is the guide selection is very important for osteoproximal diseases, whether it is left main or uh, RC osteum. And uh, a second wire in aorticus is sometimes needed for catheter support and maneuvering around the ostium. And it also helps in the correct delineation of the ostium and prevents osteal injury or dissection. Uh, Doctor Ashtar, thank you, sir. Uh, I would like, I would like first, to... Can we see your first slide where you have an RCA picture? Yes, sir, definitely. See, clearly to me, the RCA is anomalous in origin. And uh, was it easy to engage or you had to sort of struggle a bit to engage? Okay, did you think it was anomalous or it was a straightforward engagement? I will stop screen, sir. I think we lost the connectivity of Dr. Ashpak Ahmed. All right, I personally feel the RCA and origin was slightly anomalous, though the guide catheter engagement was uh, very satisfactory. The GR. <laughs> The GR4 was probably uh, uh, a good engagement, but I don't know at what stage could could be some struggle. Now, if we don't have to miss the osseum, like in the second uh, stent, Dr. Ashfaq, you're showing us the first yeah. Yeah, number three slide. Yeah, if you can run it for us, was it easy the engagement or it was difficult? Dr. Ashfaq, you're muted, I think. Uh, I think, uh, yeah. Pardon, sir? Was it easy to engage this catheter or it was difficult to engage? Sir, it was easy, relatively easy. 0.75 I took just for the support. Uh, it was relatively easy to engage. But while uh, maneuvering the stand near the ostium, sir, that time I was having difficulty. Okay, why did you think you missed the ostium? If you were to do this case all over again, what are the mm. steps that you would do it differently uh, than the way you did it? Uh, sir, I guess uh, uh, I will take the same uh, uh, guide and I'll definitely put a wire in the cusp uh, so that the guide movement inside the RCA is restricted and I, am, uh, I can delineate the ostium clearly. And uh, handling the that you uh, that, that is the, the second stent. Hmm? Yes, sir. But I think it, it, probably the first stent should, should keep us on slide number three, if you don't mind. Yes, sir. And keep it running. Uh, if you have to, uh, I think the osseal preparation is quite different from the conventional preparation. Yes. Uh, so this osteum has to be dilated aggressively. Most of the time, I would like to take a cutting balloon because the osseal lesion behaves more like aorta and less like coronary artery. So if the, you are a, take a stent, many people feel, oh, it's a small lesion, small length lesion. So let's take the direct stent. But osseal lesions are very hard. And that's why you must prepare them properly. And that is the reason why I would tell you that you should- Yes, sir, that, that's a good point. Sir. Cutting balloon. Cutting balloon followed by a non-compliant balloon. So that will open up the osteum well. 
Mm-hmm. And then lesser possibility. Then we then down. we put things. And good. Then, that is a good suggestion. You always make uh, the stent float a bit in the aorta when you are deploying. So I would feel that when you start deploying, you go up to about two or so. At that stage, you open up the wiring, release the catheter a bit, let the catheter come back a bit because you had you had inflated the balloon and stent. So a stent is not going to move. So maybe three, four, or two at that mm-hmm. stage, open up the wiring, get the catheter back, and then go up on yeah. you know, further inspection. And then, since the stent is a little bit floating in the aorta, something like two mil- two two struts, two struts, two struts two. in the aorta, taking next balloon sometimes can be difficult. That's why once you deploy the stent at whatever pressure you decide, say eight or something around that the nominal pressure bring back the balloon and go high pressure with the stent balloon itself assuming that the next next balloon for post dilatation if it doesn't go in uh, you have at least done a aggressive dilatation with the stent oh, balloon itself so whenever you are hanging the stent in the aorta uh, this is the precaution you should take i mean assume that it may not go so try and do a complete job with the stent balloon itself yeah. sir my question will Thank be you. i'm just just interrupting but uh, 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 dr hiramath i would just like to yes. ask which view you would prefer for a osteo stenting uh, of rca that, that is another very important no i i would definitely uh, go in a caudal view lo caudal view where uh, slightly lo and uh, caudal where we can delineate the ostium sometimes most of the time the ostiums are clearly visible and as in this case the lo view is itself giving us a very clear picture uh, but uh, some of the times we do need to take another shot in rio caudal or a, a simple uh, lo view but definitely lo caudal will be my choice yes, sir Yes, sir has already mentioned that it looks a little anomalous origin yeah. of the RC rather than the conventional one. Yes. Sir. So in this case, I would like to ask from sir that which view we should prefer, in particularly this kind of RC. Yeah. Uh, can't you go to slide number three, uh, Doctor Ashwat? Yes, sir. No, no, don't run it. Just go to slide number three. So that was a pre pre stenting. Uh... Yeah, no, we wanted it pre stenting. See, you can. Yes, see sir. The initial portion of the vessel is coming straight down. Keep running, and then it takes a horizontal course. So I think the first uh, maybe half an inch or one inch is uh, the portion which is anomalous. Uh, uh, yeah. I mean, it is because it's anomalous origin. It's looking like that. and sir looking at the anatomy i just uh, i just want to take your expert opinion sir looking at the anatomy initially i thought that i would put a slightly longer stent this was an 18 mm stent and what i wanted is a 22 or a 23 so that i had some margin to maneuver uh, the stent uh, in the ostium a smaller stents uh, do tend to slip a lot sir uh, what is your opinion on that sir no no 18 is already long i mean the lesion is just about 4 mm and <laughs> yes sir 18 <laughs> it is more than enough i would have probably settled for 15 or something like that maybe 15 or 12 okay so okay more, more because the vessel is running down and then taking a bend and then taking a i would probably horizontal cover push. that bend for that reason i would take 15 or 18 so 22 was more than enough i thought you know can you repeat again the uh, uh, the it's very important to see uh, and what dr uh, yadav is asking is which view is the best view i think that would again change depending on how different is your origin see this, this was the caudal view this was a caudal view this is the caudal view sir this is the caudal view yeah, yeah so i think this is showing the opening very well mm-hmm. uh, the ostium very well so i think i would probably work in the same view all the time and then intermittently when you are going to inflate the stent probably uh, double check in uh, lao plain lao view yeah. but it would be between lao and lao cord but it's a very important thing to know that uh, then second thing is uh, dr ashraf you had a pacemaker in 
when you were doing the LAD? Sir, I had a, a TPI in, uh, I, I planned a, uh, OCT and uh, Austral RC as I was dealing with. So we plan to go in with a uh, TPI support uh, right from the beginning as I we are doing in the same sitting. RC Austrium I was dealing with, so that's why I took a support, sir. Otherwise, there was no other reason. Uh, but you think it's absolutely necessary or this is your style? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I would have probably felt it's not necessary. See, the Tarsalad <coughs> post-procedure which happened there more because of the temporary pacemaker than the procedure itself. So I think we used to be careful that any serious patient, any difficult case, put a temporary pacemaker. But we have moved away from this practice only because uh, the tamponade possibility is much higher. Jabir, you want to add anything? I, yes, Dr. Ramath. Actually, I was also wondering why was there a, a temporary pacemaker? It's a well done case, Dr. Ashtak. And uh, all of us, all of us, I'm sure yeah, all people who have done adequate number of interventions have gone through this problem. Slipping of the stent, uh, jo jo what is called geographic miss. I, may put, I must put it as a geographic miss. Especially when you do the ostium, there's always a chance either it can offshoot or it can overshoot. So this happens. This happens at times. And uh, uh, it's not because of our fault. Only thing is we should be absolutely careful, as extremely careful as Dr. Hiramath was also pointing out. Uh, we have to use multiple views. And uh, Dr. Yadav was asking, which is the standard view? In fact, after some time, we'll feel that there is nothing called a standard view, rather the view which shows the OSTM well. We may have to inject and see which is the view which is showing the OSTM well. That with one or two or three injections, you'll be able to understand which view gives the OSTM well in the LAO, a little tilt and uh, uh, towards a little caudal, a little cranial. Finally, you'll get a correct view where you can see the OSTM well, and that is the view. And as he said, then we will keep it as our workhorse view where we will, we will put this uh, stand and then a, uh, uh, another view where it is better always, I would prefer to look into another view and see whether we are in the correct position and the uh, uh, a, 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 a diametrically opposite view and see whether it is in the correct view. Temporary pacemakers, we used to put temporary pacemakers when at, during the beginning of the era of angioplasty. When we, when, whenever we do RCA, we used to put, especially during primary PTCA, we used to keep always a temporary wire, but right now, we are absolutely afraid of temporary wires and we have moved from the stiff wire to balloon tipped wires, uh, uh, pacemaker uh, wires right now. Uh, what do you, uh, Dr. Ramat, are you using a balloon tipped uh, pacemaker wires now? Yes. Uh, basically, yes. I don't yes, sir. Yes, sir. We are, we are using the balloon tipped pacemaker. Right. So uh, after doing an extremely good job without any issues, we'll ship the patient uh, to the CCU and after two, three hours, the resident will call you tell that sir, there is pericardial effusion. Is the so at midnight, you have to come and do, and it gives a, a shiver over your spine, the pericardial effusion due to the temporary pacemaker in a patient who is fully heparinized with a dual antiplatelet therapy. So as uh, Dr. Ramat was pointing out, as far as possible, we'll try to avoid a temporary pacemaker, rather keep a venous sheath. Probably we'll always keep a venous sheath if needed. We can go in quickly and put in the pacemaker. And uh, during this osteal stenting, uh, I don't know uh, whether we routinely use this uh, technique of this as a technique, which is quite useful, You keeping a wire in the aortic ostium. What I feel is that you used the JR, isn't it? Uh, but you used the AR2. What, what was the catheter used? That was an AL.75. AL.75. It is because uh, it is AL.75. Uh, this is of of course always the problem with the Amplatz catheter because it can just push in the uh, a little movement, the uh, catheter will push the stand inside. So I would prefer to pull the entire unit out, then push the stent in so that the catheter will remain out and the stent will go in and check it in two views, look at the ostium and then deploy. Even then it can slip. Even then it can slip. Let's ask All Dr. Ashfaq why he used a AL catheter in this case. Dr. Ashfaq, why, why did you use a AL.75? Any, any specific, any specific? Uh, uh, sir, uh, we... No, sir. We tried with the, I guess, JR catheter. As far as I remember, we tried with the JR catheter, but uh, uh, it was not engaging properly due to the uh, unusual origin. It's a, it's a downgoing. It was a uh, downgoing RCA at the uh, at the proximal. Why... 
five uh, uh, anatomy is such five or ten millimeters uh, running down and the, so we are unable to connect it with the uh, JR. That is why we went up went with the point seven five. Would you like to keep the guide outside the ostium during the stenting, the final deployment of the stenting? That yes, sir. We, we, we do keep it just, just outside the uh, yeah, uh, to, and uh, keep checking the angio in uh, two different views. We did that, but uh, somehow it slipped and uh, then we got a bit wiser and it's okay. <laughs> then we came up with another wire. Dr. Jabir, two comments we need from you. One is uh, stent length. Uh, Dr. Ashraf had taken 22 length. Uh, so it was 18, sir. It was uh, 18. 18. So uh, that you would also do that or you would take a shorter length stain. That is one. And the stain choice, because it's an osseal lesion, would you want to take a stain which has more radial strength, thicker struts, something like H0 or more than that? Or you, you don't mind any st uh, strut thickness like 6-0 or... Jabit? I would I I would always prefer for a stent with a good radial strength and at the same time I would prefer a stent which doesn't have much history of longitudinal compression. Any stent with a history of longitudinal compression I may avoid. I'll put a stent with a good radial strength because as you said, ostium behaves more like aorta rather than like the coronaries. Here, the tissue there is totally uh, what you call it, it is totally separate from the rest of the coronary artery. The elastic recoil is also quite high. Sir, what do you think the mid RCL lesion should we do a functional assessment of that or can we leave it as such because it looks a borderline lesion? So, mid RCA, did we deliberately leave or did we do any functional evaluation? Dr. Ashwak, no, no, we did not. We did not uh, uh, do any FFR. Uh, it looked. Dr. Jabir, if you were to do a post stent imaging in this case, knowing that this is a slightly anomalous origin, would you take any special? Precaution as you push your OCT uh, catheter down this vessel. If uh, I think there won't be much problem in pushing an OCT catheter down if the catheter is well seated. His catheter was well seated. So if it is a post standing imaging, what I would prefer is during the deflation of the stent, before completely deflating the balloon, completely deflating the balloon, I would like to slide my catheter in with the over the balloon and keep it inside the stent and put in the uh, uh, wire and the OCT, uh, uh, put in the OCT catheter. This it's, is uh, very important what Dr. Jabir has mentioned that once you deploy the stent and you're trying to bring out the stent balloon, before you pull it back, readjust your, rotate your catheter, maybe open the O-ring to adjust the rotation so that on the stent balloon, the catheter makes alignment with the deployed stent. You should try to do it after withdrawing the balloon. Your only wire which is supporting, and there is a big uh, sort of gap between the wire diameter and the guide catheter lumen. So it may not engage easily. It might hurt the stent. So uh, before withdrawing, align the guide catheter, and then you can slide your OCT catheter easily. So this is just a precautionary steps. Uh, I think we have all gone through uh, areas where we have heard the ostium trying to uh, push uh, next a balloon in or next an OCT catheter. This will also hold true when you take the post-dilatation balloon. I don't know, Dr. Ashfaq, whether you did a post-dilatation with an NC balloon, but uh, yes, so we did. We did. Uh, we did do a post dilatation with okay. an NC. Yes. So even for that, while taking this stent balloon out, if you align the uh, guide catheter right into the stent, uh, uh, it's easier to take the next anything uh, into the vessel. It may be OCT, it may be NC balloon, and so on. Always be aware of the fact that in small, even with minor manipulations, uh, we can damage the osteal part of the stent, the stent strut that is at the osteum. Uh, and with the next balloon introduction, it can increase the damage. There can be a lot of troubles we can enter. enter this into. is especially true if you dissected the distal end of the stent. 
Okay, say you imagine this tent is well deployed, everything has gone well. But if you happen to dissect at the distal end and you have pulled out your stent balloon, to take the next anything, like next stent for to cover the dissected segment becomes sometimes very difficult. So always in an anomalous origin, before you withdraw the guide, make sure that your uh, guide is well aligned with the stent. I'm not saying go deep, but it should be well aligned so that next anything can go in smoothly. Okay, are there any questions in the chat box, uh, Dr. Not yet, sir, not yet. All right, anybody wants to add anything, anybody from the panel? So when you're doing the osteo lesion like this, the preferable size for the guide, would you prefer a six French or a seven French guide catheter? I think a six French would be better to go inside the stent, which is overhanging and uh, will rather uh, do a less harm to the stent. Yeah, I mean, in this case, uh, there is no thought about taking a seven French guide. So we would definitely work from the, uh, uh, from the, with the six French as we always do. Uh, but uh, but let's say those who are purely radialist, I'm sure there are many like this these days. Uh, what would they like to take in this kind of origin? Anybody on the panel who has? But we would we will, we will take only a six French. There is no we'll six French. Uh, there is no absolute indication for a seven French. Se that's, this that's is only an optical lesion. A seven if, French if may if give a. If you're going radial, if you're going. No, radial. we can, sir. Nowadays, uh, Doctor Nimat, we sir, nowadays we uh, going, uh, seven, six seven sheet. We use a six seven sheet where we can uh, thread in a seven French catheter. Nowadays, we do most of the bifurcations, even which requires two stents simultaneously. Hmm. We use a seven French uh, using the six. If the radial is good, we can use a six seven uh, six seven guide. Uh, sorry, six seven sheath. That sheath can accommodate a seven French uh, guide. There is this uh, railroading technique. Yes, we use the railroading. Uh, yeah, railroading technique. Otherwise, the, it will kink. Yes, where the guide catheter is also different. Yes. The uh, terminal, uh, some centimeters are very soft. And uh, we can take that catheter over the wire uh, 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 the radio. Bar. All right, uh, Dr. Ashfaq, very well done. I think uh, you highlighted many points uh, which don't easily come to our mind, like osteal lesion. We say, oh, simple lesion, small length, uh, let's go and stent it. But never do that. I think every case is a very important case. Every successful case is taking you one step higher, one step higher. So always try and make a perfect job the way you did in this case. So thank you, indeed thank you. for highlighting so many points. So we go to thank you, and Dr. MS Yadav is presenting. Dr. Ashpak, you need to un unshare the screen. Yeah, thank you. Dr. Ashfaq, anyway, you didn't tell us what, where is this Mukundpur? We were curious. Is my screen audio? Um, see my screen? No, not sir. A, not. You can see, sir, a green color arrow at the bottom. Share screen. Your, no, I did it on that. that oh, one. Sir, open the presentation first. Your I opened here. the presentation. Then click on share screen button, which you see on the Zoom. Then you have a pop-up, you can select your PPT from it. See, share screen, I just uh, went to, okay, share. Yeah. Now you can see? 
Yes. Yeah. Okay. Just leave to full mode. Yeah, I'm just. Now you can see, I guess. Yes. Yes. Go ahead. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, here is a case which me and Dr. Viveka had done. Uh, this is a distal left mid trifurcation lesion treated with the uh, tap technique two stents, and another stent was deployed in the distal LAD. So this was a 69 year old gentleman um, had no diabetes or hypertension. He presented with angina and dyspnea class three for a few weeks and which increased in intensity, maybe due to overexertion or something. He had normal cardiac enzymes and uh, there were T inversions in the precordial leads. Ejection fraction was normal. So his coronary artery disease revealed a lesion in the uh, left system, LAD, early uh, OM and uh, uh, circumflex, sorry, early diagonal circumflex. And then he was taken up for a PCI after informed consent and giving an option of surgery as well. So he, he refused for surgery and just went for PCI. So this is the baseline angiogram, if we see. So uh, there is a distal left main. There is significant disease in proximal to mid LED. There is a significant lesion in early diagonal or ramus, you can say. There is a lesion at the sarcostium also. So, uh, and this is another view, you could see. Uh, So uh, we wired both LAD and LCX uh, and pre-dilated with the uh, 2.5 into 15 millimeters NC balloon and uh, this dilatation of LAD. Then dilatation of circumflex. So this is what you can see after the pre-dilatation, the 2.5 balloon. We also dilated the uh, uh, early diagonal or ramus. Then we deployed a 3 into 38 millimeters drug eluting stent uh, and from proximal to mid LED at 14 atmosphere. And this is the result. There is a distal, a little over uh, sizing of the stent, but age looks fine which we confirmed uh, later on I was also. Then we took another 3.5 into 22 millimeter stent deployed in left wind to LED overlapping with the distal stent at 14 atmosphere again. This is the position of the stent. And this is the stent of deployment. So then early diagonal circumflex were uh, recrossed and sarcostium was again pre-dilated with 2 into 15 mm balloon at uh, 12 atmosphere. Then a 3.5 into 14 millimeter stent deployed in left mint to circumflex, employing a tap technique, keeping a balloon into the left mint to LED. And uh, it was deployed at 14 atmosphere. Sequentially followed by a SKS uh, done with a balloon 3.5 into 12 into left mint to LED and a balloon 3.5 into 14 and left mint to LCX at 10 atmosphere. So this is the result uh, after that. Then we did IVERS and uh, uh, there was a proper position of the uh, stent at uh, right from the left main to the um, mid LED and, and, and fairly open of the circumflex ostium. And uh, this is the result, final result. What was done at the distal left main uh, with 4.5 uh, into 8 mm NC balloon at 12 atmosphere. So this is how it looks like in a final uh, result.
So uh, there are few points uh, that the PCI is reasonable treatment alternative of CABG in left main disease with the low syntax score or maybe intermediate syntax score. A rate of repeat revascularization expected to be higher compared to CABG in intermediate to high syntax score and use of third generation deaths and current stents. Imaging technology may help improving outcomes. So now more often we are using OCT rather than IVAS uh, for imaging and uh, uh, doing post dilatation and choosing the size of stents. And usually a single stent strategy should be preferred in bifurcation, but until unless you have a compromise in the flow or symptoms post procedure uh, in the left main uh, bifurcation lesion. But these people, selected people with a significantly large size uh, uh, side branch and uh, maybe uh, ischemia after that, uh, it is preferable to do a two stent strategy. And TEP is a useful technique, uh, particularly when you have an angle of carina more than 90 degree or somewhere 70 to 90 degree. So uh, this is what case is. I would like to have opinion of the um, um, Doctor, expert uh, directors Yadu, on this. Can you show us the last image, last final picture, maybe spider view? Sir. Yes, this one. Sir. So as I, I didn't understand, you put a LED stent first, not coming to left main. Then you put a circumflex stent, again, not coming to the uh, left main origin, left main uh, ostium. No, mm -hmm. sir. The the LED proximal stent is the distal stent was there, but the proximal stent is from left main to LED. Correct, but you you said you did an SKS or something like that. Did sir, we it? kept a balloon. We kept a smaller balloon rather than uh, the stent balloon. We kept a smaller balloon in the uh, left main to LED, and then we deployed uh, using a tap. We deployed a stent into the circumflex. It was just a marker just coming into the left main, not the circ stent, uh, not fully coming into the left main. I'll just show you the position of the stent. So it is a tap technique you're saying? Sir. Is that correct? Uh, sir, ideally, uh, you put a balloon, you keep a, either a stent balloon or you may use another balloon. As far as my knowledge is concerned, you would better enlighten me on this. So this is the position of the sir, uh, LED stent. It is coming back to left main. Yeah, it is coming back to left main, sir. Hmm. You could see. Okay. Yeah, and this okay. is deployed here. And then you did a circumflex stent. Sir, we rewired everything, and then we did ballooning to the circumflex again. Hmm. And then this is the deployment of the circ stent, which is coming into the left main just a little. But that is a tap technique, not SKS, correct? No, sir. We did a simultaneous kissing after deploying the stent. We did a tap. And after tap, we we uh, did the ballooning of the both the uh, stents, the left main to LED as well as left main to circumflex. Okay, so it was a it was a final kiss. That's Sir, we did uh, what what I have shown here is that we we deployed it using a tap technique, and then sequentially followed by a SK uh, side uh, a sequential kissing balloon done with the balloons 3.5 into 12, left main to LED and 3.5 into 14 left bend to circumflex at 10 atmosphere. I think as I understand, you're talking of second case or a final case. Yeah, final case. And then we did a pot with a 4 into 10 balloon, sir. 4 into 8, sorry. Yeah. 4.5 into the 8 into the left main, distal left. That is for the left main. So this is our final result, sir. See, the circumflex or shim is generally the actually seal for any kind of left main bifurcation stenting. Sir. So uh, to me, uh, I would probably choose. Uh, left main to circ first. No, I would use uh, DK crush. Okay. Because you are going to stent the circumflex anyway, correct? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So DK crush would probably give matter, more strength at the circumflex osseum. And, uh, or you can use a culot. But. Okay. I mean, tap is a sort of, uh, if you're wanting to do, not wanting to do, and then you decide to do, then you use a tap. Uh, but uh, for this kind of circumflex. Uh, when we are planning to do a circ uh, anyway, so we, we you, so you yeah. prefer a DK crush or kill The other thing is uh, you showed us when you dilated in the beginning, Sir. The balloon, Sir. Uh, you had wires in the uh, diagonal as well as circumflex. Sir. 
and you balloon the uh, uh, circumflex as well as diagonal sir with when you balloon the led hmm? sir is it necessary i mean i feel i would work on the led completely do a pot mm-hmm. then wire circumflex then wire uh, diagonal if i want to or okay. leave it alone and then do a see if you touch a vessel with a balloon and then try to rewire sometimes you could be entering through the flap and a flap flap you dissected this section you already created while pre dilating so it is not really necessary to unless you are going to use a cutting balloon or something which uh, may not go afterwards so i only concern was that sir, the disease in the circ in the beginning if you see uh so the concern was that if we are not able to cross after putting the first stent mm. like looking at this circumflex mm. so that was the only concern to pre wire it but even after pre wiring maybe we may leave it not doing a balloon just leaving the wire only because once you uh, dilate pull out the wire then definitely you are creating in, a dissection uh, you are unnecessarily taking a chance on the dissection so no. that first initial i mean what this is for the Uh, people who are uh, sort of into angioplasty and are relatively junior that sure. first work on the uh, circum uh, led L- back to left main okay. put whatever stent in this case two stents were required so two were put then do a pot on the left main okay so when you do pot wiring to the side branch is almost certain so you will not fail on the side mm-hmm. branch wiring and then in this case uh, you can use a nc balloon or an opn balloon also would be a reasonable indication because circumflex ostium is always very very hard so if you are deployed a stent i would probably use an opn balloon and then take a, a you could have done a few lots also uh, the way all steps but bringing the balloon a stent back and you could have done a few lots so okay sir could be the uh, sort of little deviation from what you did okay sir jabir what are the ways in which you can avoid isr to the lcx ostium i mean this kind of case your worry in long term would be the yeah as worry. you as you said isr of circumflex ostium in fact uh, uh, you rightly mentioned it is actually seal of all left main bifurcation intervention what we can do uh, to avoid isr it's a it's a it's a tough question to take with an imaging what we have seen one thing what we have seen is if it is a crossover stenting if it is a crossover stenting and if we have a connector across the circumflex ostium then that is one situation which can act as a nidus for future new intimal proliferation and restenosis so whenever in a crossover stenting whenever we see a connector across the circumflex ostium we would either like to we would nowadays we'll case either with a normal balloon or with a drug eluting balloon and preferably if there is no lesion especially if the image if the imaging is not showing any lesion across the circumflex and the proximal part of circ and the ostium we we'll leave it with the ballooning we we'll leave it with the ballooning or sometimes with a drug eluting balloon but then okay. even it is a two stent technique if it is a two stage technique last many cases we have discussed the same issue and uh, i'm sure uh, dr hiramat is uh, is always telling in a left main bifurcation with a circumflex he may hesitate to put do a tap stenting as a bifurcation two stent technique it may be preferably a culot or a dk crush and we if we look at the data of the stenting techniques dk crush has got an edge over the culot in the last many dk crush studies which has shown that better long term results will be with a dk crush always i would prefer to do a imaging optimization of the stenting optimal stent deployment look for any dissections manage the dissections and a full coverage of the circumflex ostium with avoiding the metal uh, crowding towards the circumflex ostium some of this may be possible only with the use of a Uh, uh use of a imaging where you can assure that your crossing of the side branch strut is if it is a dk crush it's a mid strut or a proximal strut for the first one and the distal strut for the last one these things can be make you are absolutely sure with the use of a imaging technique if no imaging technique 
if no imaging then lavish post dilatation and uh, 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 an excellent uh, port. port and a report these are the things that we can do and select a technique where the ostium of the circumflex is well covered and in tap there is always a possibility that the under surface of the circumflex ostium may not be covered with a tap there is a chance that we may miss it miss the so, ostium so we may it is better maybe a better technique if you look at it may be a better technique maybe a dk crush but always in bifurcation the rule of thumb is whichever the operator is convenient experienced and comfortable I think if you see the uh, overall scene for left main bifurcation or trifurcation, for that matter, uh, the initial tendency that we should end with one stent is clearly moving towards two stent strategy. So uh, I think if you see some of the recent uh, uh, data, two stent strategy looks uh, quite promising, especially if your circumflex is a uh, good size vessel. So I do not hesitate in uh, sort of making a pre-thought before we start that this case is going to be two stent technique. Two stent. And in that case, work on the circumflex first. So circumflex ostium cutting balloon, then you put a stent, you could plan a decay crush or you could put a, a culottes, bring the stent back into the left main and then re-enter towards LAD and work on LAD. And then do a pot, final pot, uh, kiss, and again a pot. Uh, Dr. Ramat, if the, if the bifurcation angle is wide and the circumflex ostium aspirin imaging is absolutely free of a disease, and there is no disease even in the proximal part of the circumflex, do you think a crossover strategy will be more reasonable? No, no, absolutely. In fact, uh, that should be the strategy. Uh, so imaging shows nothing in the circumflex ostium. Uh, in this case, uh, Dr. Yadav's case, uh, the circumflex was a big vessel. And in addition, it showed a lesion at the mouth. So I think ostium. in his mind, two stent strategy was always on. Right from the beginning. Right from the beginning. This was clearly a case for two stent strategy, no doubt about it, because your angiography itself was showing significant disease. Yeah. Of the what, what about the third vessel? You know, uh, you do this fancy angioplasty, everything is good. And then you realize that the uh, diagonal or the ramus or the high one, whichever the third branch is, yeah, I think you have to define right in the beginning whether that third branch is a branch of LAD or it's a branch of circumflex or it is coming right from beginning, right from the middle mm -hmm. and not, not belongs to either LAD or circumflex. Mm -hmm. Why I'm saying this is if it is not belonging to either of them, and then you have to address it because it's heavily pinched after putting two stents. Mm -hmm. And this is especially true if you do a culottes because two layers of stent in the carina, and mm -hmm. then you have to wire through that and get into the vessel. I think doing a tap becomes rather difficult. So tap is a good technique for the third branch. Uh, if it is a branch of LED, you can still go after deploying the LED branch. stent and uh, do a tap. If it is a branch of circumflex, again, you can yeah. work on tap. But, uh, you know, after putting so much metal, especially the left main ostium is also covered by the stain. Taking the third stain, especially if you are to come through left main, get a little bit into circumflex and then to the OM, the metal will probably find it difficult to go through. So it's better to take short length stains and do this. If you take so longer you... stents, the metal will sort of crush again, I mean, rub against each other and will not move easily. Uh, sir, you... When would you, sir, when would you prefer to do a trifurcation? I mean, addressing all of three. I mean, in, in, in... in this case, I think a two stent strategy was very good, good enough. Yeah, yeah. But there are some cases where uh, uh, we, we said two, two vessels which are to be done are for sure. The third vessel we do FFR. Okay. If it is a moderate stenosis, third vessel you do FFR. If FFR is negative, make sure that you don't uh, uh, push any uh, material towards the vessel. 
So use a technique which will not compromise that vessel and end up with no strain to the third vessel, which has a normal at Okay. Okay. Javid? What about, uh, for example, uh, uh, this was a big brand. The diagonal was pretty big, not a very small. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It surely uh, uh, seems to be a 2.5 or a rather a 2.75 millimeter. 2.75, it would take a 2.75 strain. Yeah. 2.75 millimeter vessel. So after doing the bifurcation of the LAD, LAD and the circumflex, either we can do a tap or even think of a drug eluting balloon to dilate the ostium of the circumflex, a triple kiss with a balloon in the left uh, LAD, a drug eluting balloon in the uh, diagonal and a balloon in the circumflex. So, and a simultaneous kissing with the three balloons. What do you, what do you think uh, about that? No, no, no. I, I think drug balloon to the ostium is never a great idea. I mean, drug balloon to a small diameter vessel, reasonably good thinking. So that is when the vessel is not at the ostium. It's a little bit deeper inside, then it's okay. But if you, to, if you realize at the end of the procedure that the third vessel is heavily pinched and you need to do something, I would definitely put a stain. Whatever you do, there will be a recoil. So just don't waste time. Go ahead and put a stain. And there, the technique will definitely be a tap technique. Thank you very much, sir, for your suggestions and comments, sir. All right. Thank you. It was an exciting case. I think left main trifurcations always uh, sort of push you up uh, as if you're playing a World Cup final. And uh, uh, then uh, a lot of discussion around people are watching you uh, in the cat lab. So on that front, this was an exciting result. And uh, 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 very well done. Thank, Thank you, Dr. Yadav. And say Thank hello you, to Dr. Uh, is he Roy. No, I don't think so. All right. So we go to the next case, and it is a non coronary case from Dr. Ramsagar Roy. So let's hear from you, Dr. Roy. Dr. Onkar, uh, what happened to uh, Dr. Viveka? Uh, Dr. Viveka Kumar sir suggested that he mentioned that there is a ESC meeting. Okay. okay. Him, so he will be joining. That's what he suggested us. Sir. All right. Let's go with Dr. Ram Sagar. First, activates these links, otherwise the videos will not play. Dr. Ramsagar, you are a cardiologist or a radiologist or? Yes, sir. Uh, sir. Uh, good evening, sir. Uh, I, am doc I am Dr. Ramsagar, DM International Cardiologist, sir. Okay. Is my slide is, uh, visible to all? Yes. yes sir. May, may I proceed, sir? Yes, yes. Hello, good evening, sir. Uh, I feel very privileged to give a small discussion uh, on this uh, small topics. Uh, first, uh, this is the trine artery embolization. First of all, uh, uh, nowadays, down catheter embolization is a very uh, important, minimally invasive alternative procedure to surgery without reduced mortality and uh, morbidity and mortality. In gynecological, gynecological condition and obstetrical condition is a great importance because most of the surgeons and gynecologists do hysterectomy when there is a um, massive bleed. So, in the, so bypassing that, uh, I think a trans catheter emulation very has very important roles. They we uh, without being a help of radiologist, we used to do embolization of fibroids, adenomyosis, adenomyosis, different type of AV malformation and different type of intact bleeding due to advanced stage of malignancies. And uh, in emergency conditions where PPH is still ongoing, there's no any chances of preserving hysterectomy. In that emergency condition, we used to take the patient in cath lab and <coughs> do embolizations. 
So by the help of gynecologists and interventional cardiologists and radiologists, we rule out, the, rule out different causes of uh, menorrhagia that causes bleed. Uh, the MRI, MRI is the best imaging tool before and after uh, uterine artemolization. And uh, for proper selection of the patients and proper delineation of the vascular anatomy. And ultrasound is easily available and very quick and expensive imaging tools for helping us. So my case is a 26-year-old female having severe bleeding, a perfect for one month. She has significant drop of blood hemoglobin from 11 to 5.7 gram. Evaluated by gynecologist, they she went through the MRI and saw that AV malformation arrived from left uterine artery more than the right uterine artery. So they referred, referred the patient to us for uterine artimulation to stop bleeding. We started the management as, as according to the guideline. Uh, we gave a volume replacement by hemostatic, by, like, along with hemostatic drugs and it, it trying cavity nephronode they already done, but still the blood was going on. So we plan for uterine artery embolizations. As a, as a routine, uh, given analgesic consideration given, given local anesthesia were given for femoral artery, right femoral artery, and uh, fentanyl and metoglomide also given for serious, mild sedation of the patients. We use the JR for uh, four French catheters, RTL with five French, and we use the crucible coils, Mary Cook uh, 0.35 and 3.3. We use the PTCA wire for pushing the coils for embolization and uh, uh, unfractionated heparin was given during the procedures. This is the angiogram, angiogram, where we taken the right femoral root for uh, selecting the uh, left uh, femoral artery, but uh, it's showing this program, so it is uh, selectively in internal, internal iliac artery proper. Next time, in next slides, next video shows the uh, the JR catheter was in the external posterior division of internal iliac artery because we know that the uterine artery arises from the anterior division of internal iliac artery. But by me, during this time, it was uh, hooked in the uh, posterior division of internal iliac artery. So further, in by selecting. We finally reached to the interior, uh, interior division of inter, interior division of interior like artery, uh, showing the AV malformation at the last of the scene, last of the fluorangiogram. This is the shown here the last uh, last of the floor AV malformation. This is the DSS sort DSS sort showing the uh, AV malformation, but very much extensive involving the it 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 ran my ma. In this uh, in this fluorogram, it's shown that uh, catheter was slightly pulled uh, pulled up, showing the four better delineation for proper selective confirmation of the uh, AV malformations. This is the uh, DSS sort of heavy malformation, but showing that it was very extensive. Uh, this is the posterior the division of internal artery, showing the other branches other than the inter, uh, artery. We, with the help of the whisper uh, whisper <coughs> PTCA wire, uh, we embolize one of the uh, one of the branch of the uh, one of the branch of uterine artery. Uh, showing that there is there are decrease in the amount of blood going to the AV malformations. The later on, the second coil was second coil was also where we see that uh, blood was still coming coming to the AV malformation. So after a few after a few gap, we are then we deploy the second uh, cook uh, it ran cook coil into the second branch of the uterine artery. So now it's shown that uh, 
there is no any uh, further communication every malformation is shown here so it is i think it is a complete and final sort of eta and it embolizations so this this is diagram so this uh, video so it is a complete uh, stoppage of the blood going going through the ev malformation so at the end we can also uh, we have we, we should be aware of that there are different type of complication with uterine uh, uh, atemolization like uh, routine complication groin puncture hematoma dissection and other contrast media which is allergy nephrotoxic effect and other post hematoma syndrome like pain fever and nausea leukocytosis and that should be all managed according to that but uh, we should also before going to the embolization we should be aware that there are few contra indication and we should be aware that like previous red, pelvic radiation acute or chronic pelvic infection refractory coagulopathy pregnancy renal impairment and any type of contrast so at last we uh, i want to summarize that uh, it's the, that uh, uterine artery embolization best alternative of hysterectomy in a young female whose family is not completed and they are still keen to preserve their uterus and uh, minimally invasive approach for various gynecological and obstetrical condition and uterine artery embolization can be completed without use of the microcatheter for proper selecting of the uterine artery and without the use of uh, without the ability of the robots uterine catheter that is a selective catheter for uterine artery so uh, uterine artery embolization is a life saving intervention in cath lab other than coronary intervention you have a picture of this robots catheter doctor no sir uh, i i mean uh, not not in slide sir in i have seen it that it is different from the rca catheter i mean i thought the catheter looked like an rca catheter this the catheter was a rca sir it was not a robots cut okay but what is the speciality of robots catheter sir uh, this catheter is a uh, <laughs> properly uh, engage the catheter uh, engage the uterine artery by sitting at the uh, side opposite side can you go ipsilateral like in this case it was the left uh, iliac you can cannulate it from right could yes, you have sir. gone from the right femoral uh, left femoral uh, directly into the uh, iliac i mean why did you choose right not left sir uh, uh by default we used to cannulate i think it is easy uh, easy to for easy for us because we are habituated to do right femoral catheterization so uh, i think this is a exciting area uh, basically there are many people competing for this uh, field like the gynecologist can easily do a hysterectomy but what dr ramsagar mentioned is the family is incomplete they still want to preserve the uterus i think uh, this is a very good option and yes, not sir. hysterectomy i mean they can only do hysterectomy under these settings yes, the yes, other indication is the multiple fibroids especially the uh, submucous uh, fibroids they respond yes, very well to this because submucous fibroid if you uh, do remove them surgically multiple the, it will heal with uh, adhesions and then the conception becomes very difficult so that is another indication where i think uh, submucous fibroid can be uh, embolized uh, i think to get uh, this kind of case is uh, very tough because nobody thinks of uh, uterine artery embolization so i'm sure dr ram sagar is friendly with all the gynecologists in his hospital they are mostly females so it's a good idea to be friendly with them mm -hmm. and the young age is very important i think if this lady was to be nearing 35 or 40 uh, i think they would do a hysterectomy straight away and not uh, worry to call dr roy mm -hmm. but now uh, dr ramath this is coming up uh, instead of doing hysterectomy uterine embolization is coming up as an alternative i think uh, especially the hard way sir improving previously it was a bit difficult to enter into the uterine artery from the internal iliac but now it is the, the your newer catheters have helped uh, only problem is cardiologists have moved away from it previously we used to do it now the radiology people the interventional radiology people have taken over that thing 
and they are doing it in nowadays no no but do they get this kind of work i mean atrium atrium embolization i doubt it very much uh, we, uh, in uh, our gynecologists are not giving because if they give uh, hysterectomy for uterine artery embolization then what will they do <laughs> 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 that is their bread and butter <laughs> yeah. i mean menorrhagia is one of the uh, very strong indication very for strong hysterectomy indication. for hysterectomy they would not even worry to find out if there is a heavy malformation which is actually the cause of bleeding they would just say excessive bleeding and menorrhagia and that's a good enough indication for hysterectomy fair enough i mean the, their procedure is also very easy and but this is uh, very good that 26 year old i think dr roy could preserve the uterus and still have a chance to get a this thing uh, uh, get pregnant again the other thing dr rai i wanted to ask you why don't you uh, do like a frozen image like you inject contrast and freeze that image don't move the table up and down road map then you can yeah like we do for carotids i mean carotid can be done in 20 25 cc if you don't move the frame so that might help if you have especially a dsa on your machine that is uh, another thing the patient would get pain right when you uh, uh, put coils i mean so i think pain component is also very important like you should sedate them quite well for the pain you are talking you are talking about the road mapping yeah road mapping yes the other thing is uh, in the end when you uh, decide that everything is over i would take a pigtail picture in the left eye layer because ultimately you are working with a selective catheter so you you may not you may miss a, another ostium. communication somewhere Communi- i'm talking of communication not the ostium of the iliac you know okay so if you do a pigtail injection you would show all the branches of internal iliac and probably uh decide if you missed out any communication which i mean you you showed at least two communications right yes sir yes sir yes and this was with selective catheterization selective catheter rather yeah, just just pulling the catheter sir correct the first injection if you make with a pigtail catheter on a dsa it will show you all the vessels which are actually feeding that heavy malformation you have put in a coil there is no problem because we used to do with the pba particles previously uh, rather than coil because coils are expensive much more expensive you may require two or three coils but uh, the pu part pba particles we are afraid of inadvertently go the injection into a gluteal artery which can produce gluteal necrosis that is one thing we should be afraid of but the coils are unlikely the only thing is if the coil slips off and uh, enters into another vessel which we have not uh, intended to uh, coil coil is very easy also uh, like you push the coil beyond the catheter it sort of uh, winds yeah. itself and it stays there it will be an answer it will stay there when we are inject used to inject glue you have to be ready like injection of glue goes in and it comes out through the catheter tip and if you don't withdraw the guide catheter it will catch the guide catheter tip so when you are injecting glue with uh, some kind of contrast moment you see you withdraw the guide catheter that's how we used to do it but we any follow up imaging like an mri or something after a few weeks just to see if you have caused extensive scarring got necrosis or something when you've done such a major vessel embolization scarring or mri has not been done but patient is symptomatic not any further history of menorrhagia no but if you caused any significant scarring or thinning of the uterus and if somebody plans a future pregnancy and then there may be a dehiscence of the uh, uh, uterus during that procedure so so any follow up imaging as a routine just to see if we are not uh, done much of the damage with the procedure no i have not got it but i will uh, be is... careful dr roy's case uh, there was a clear av malformation hmm? but it is also used for fibroids multiple fibroids you know uh, where the patient wants to conceive later uh, so i think uh, 
generally these kind of things will not produce any scarring you know? i yeah. think it is being used in other malignancies also i mean some selected masses also the selected embolization of particular mass or something uh, this is mostly used in renal renal artery renal renal tumors the renal tumors. from yes. where it is highly vascular we have yeah. done it for uh, uh, ent tumors ent sphenopalatine they, uh, arteries we have embolized also used uh, sort of uh, uh, the anti malignancy medications intralesional for targeted chemotherapy correct so for that mm -hmm. also uh, they have used this uh, kind of therapy and the urologists are very comfortable of uh, getting this done because the bleeding will be much less even we are going for the nephrectomy so they'll have a good uh, clear field when they do the nephrectomy so okay. always they send the patient for an embolization first and uh, reduce, the, uh, reduce the uh, the reduce the, uh, the vascularity so how much gap you keep between embolization Decision just now, and the surgery should be immediate in next few hours, or it can be done few days later. They do it few days later, okay. one or two days later. Guru, seven thirty. Yeah, what happened? I mean, next uh, option for this kind of patient is hysterectomy. So we hmm. are obviously competing with uh, gynecologists for a referral. Patient is there, so you need to sort of convince them. So, as we keep talking to many people that something like this is possible, so many gynecologists will not even know that Dr. Roy can yes, do sir. this kind of therapy. Yes. So I think you have to sort of advertise, market yourself that you can do this, or not from marketing angle, but make them understand that something like this is possible. All right. Anything else? <clears throat> Dr. Jabir, what do you think getting into the left iliac artery internal iliac would be easier if you access from left or crossover from right and getting into the iliac would be better? Sir, you need to unmute, sir. Jabir, sir, you need to unmute. Yeah, yeah it's from the right on from the contralateral side will be better rather from the, rather than from the left. The lie of the iliac is downwards. So contralateral would work better. If you go from the ipsilateral side, you're closer to the vessel. Uh, so uh, it sometimes helps uh, to get a good push. But in this case, uh, push and all are really not required. You're, once you get in uh, with a 3-5 wire, you slide it in and stay there all the time. So this was a six-range six JR you used, Dr. Yadav? Four or six. You're muted, Dr. Yadav. And Dr. Roy. Dr. Roy, sorry. You're muted. You need to unmute yourself, Dr. Roy. Yes, now we can hear you. Sir, four friends JR Katra were used. Four friends JR. Mm -hmm. The uh, neurologists, when they put coil, what diameter catheter they use? Four only? I think four they use. Their coils, are, their coils are very nice. They are expensive, but they move very easily. All right. Looks like any other comments? Uh, this has never grown. I, I'm sh I, I, I was quite impressed by one uh, study from Bangalore where they had some 50-odd cases where they had done uterine artery embolization, but that was many, many years back could be about 15 years back. But I think after that, we haven't heard so much of it. In fact, I'm hearing for the very first time today after 15 years gap. So congratulations, Dr. Ramsagar. Thank you, sir. And Dr. Onkar, I think we are coming to end of today's session. Yes, sir. Uh, I think we had a very exciting session. 
uh, starting from Dr. Ashfaq, uh, who did the uh, RCA origin, how to do it. Uh, though he missed the uh, ostium, I think we had a lot of learning points from this, so that both the Dr. Ashfaq and myself will not miss RCA ostium in future. So that was uh, interesting. I think it was an anomalous uh, origin. That's perhaps one of the important reasons why the ostium is missed. But always remember, one of the reasons why the stent slips is because we do not prepare the ostium properly. So next time, it, for that matter, any ostium, if you want to do a, put a stent in LAD and diagonal, uh, you decide to stent after putting a stent. Like you go with an idea of provisional single stent and then switch to a tap to diagonal. That ostium also has to be prepared very strongly. So I would always use an NC balloon. These days we have a, a OPN balloon, and then you can also use a, a cutting balloon. But ostium has to be very well prepared for a long-term good patency result. Then we had this case by Dr. M. S. Yado. I like to take the initial <laughs> and uh, he showed us a very exciting case on uh, uh, left main uh, trifurcation. It would have been even more challenging if the third stent also was required. But uh, luckily uh, for... We were fortunate, sir. <laughs> <laughs> it was not required, but uh, as people mm. sitting in the balcony, we would have loved to see a third stent going in. This year, CSI in January or February, I saw two cases presented, trifurcation. Yes. People did three stents, so really exciting to see. No, I have many trifurcations done with three stents. Mm -hmm. So uh, if circumflex or one of the branches gives you a zero FFR, I mean, a negative FFR after putting a stent, I think you're lucky. Mm -hmm. So, uh, but anyway, the techniques discussion was uh, really interesting. I am sure all of us learned a lot from that uh, trifurcation case. And then this uh, unusual uterine artery embolization. I think, uh, you know, Dr. Uh, Ramsagar, our field is clearly shrinking. As Dr. Jabir mentioned, these are some of the areas gone from cardiologist's hands, you know. Like I used to do so many... Uh, leg intervention. Uh, I used to get invite, invited to uh, Far East, especially Malaysia, where we, I went as a peripheral man. And uh, these days, I, in two, three months, I do one leg. So uh, I think uh, it's sort of getting compartmentalized and you know, carotid. There were so many invitations in the early phase when we started doing carotid. Very few carotid these days for cardiologists. So I think uh, its areas are getting cut down. So, but uh, I think uh, uh, Dr. Roy, all of us should make an attempt to uh, talk to gynecologists that such a therapy is available. I think even if they get up to this point, it's an achievement of some kind. So I would congratulate you for getting a reference like this. Uh, uh, I think the young age was probably a driving point why the gynecologist wanted to uh, do it non-surgically, like without the hysterectomy. If, see, for them, hysterectomy is so easy, you know, and uh, uh, they, it, they would have probably taken the same time as what you have taken to finish up a hysterectomy. But the patient uh, will be ever so grateful to you for doing it non-surgically one and preserving the uterus for a possible future pregnancy. So all our good wishes, she gets pregnant sometime whenever she wants and uh, gets a baby. And you really, really helped her to do that. Dr. Jabir, you want to add anything? I think all, uh, all learning point, all learning, all cases we are learning something and uh, visiting our basics which is quite important for all future interventions. It's, it's important. So whatever be the case, there are a lot of learning things, a lot of things to be discussed, and it sharpens uh, our skills also. Thank you. Thank you. for Thank you. All the presenters did a wonderful job. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Dr. Yadav. Thank you, sir. Well, Dr. Viveka, we missed him. Hmm? 
I'll tell him, sir. Definitely, he had three, uh, uh, I think, uh, presentations today. <laughs> so, uh, anyway, I'll just convey him, sir. Thank you, sir. And he can give one his, one of his presentation to us also. <laughs> <laughs> I get sometimes the opportunity, sir. Fortunately, I'm working with him, so I get it. <laughs> good, good. Nice man and uh, very uh, sort of. Man who has achieved so many things, so it would, must be a wonderful experience working with him. I'm sure. Sir, definitely. Okay, Dr. Omkar, back to you. And uh, yeah, we must thank uh, uh, Dr. Omkar for an extraordinary efforts every time he sets up this. Ma, our pleasure, sir. Our pleasure. No, no. I think uh, unless you take efforts, this will not happen. And many of uh, the younger crowd I would have never met in person like this. I'm saying it in person because it's as good as meeting in person. Yes. Like if you, if I and Dr. M. S. Yadav, mm -hmm. where you were used to, in a CSI meeting, we would cross each other and not say hello to each other because we don't know each other. Yes. But I know there is somebody who has my initials in Max, and. Uh, I, I'll, I'll always uh, tell everybody. I hope, sir, you'll remember me now. <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> At least for that initial, I will remember you. Sir. So, uh, one thing, sir, uh, just from my end, sir, next our meeting falls in line with the CSI. So we will conduct the next meeting, sir. So our next meeting would be on 26th of December because 25th is Christmas. So we will be planning on 26th uh, next meeting, sir. Today, we have more than 500 uh, logins at one portal. We have two, three portals, sir. So then we calculate at the end how many logins are, are there. Sir. So that's one thing. One small announcement from our end, sir. As you uh, know, sir, uh, uh, this Rivaroxaban is going off patent. So MCure is also coming, uh, want to launch, and we will be coming with Exafib. It would be our Rivaroxaban uh, brand, sir. We will be launching on 30th of December. So we will not get an opportunity. So I thought I will take this opportunity to show you the how the look and feel of the brand, sir. So this is the name Exafib uh, is our brand name for uh, River Oxaban. And we will be coming with the all the strengths, sir. Uh, 2.5. .5. Yes, sir. 2.5 also. So all the strengths and it will be in-house manufacturing at MQR, sir. You know the quality of MQR, oh, yeah. sir. And we have already done the bioavailability and bioequivalence, sir. We are already proven that we are at par to the innovators sir, in terms of uh, uh, pharmacokinetics, in terms of uh, bioavailability, uh, everything, sir. So we look forward uh, this uh, this product to launch in the next month on 13th of uh, December, sir. So you must tell us that whatever special things uh, MCure is doing. We are all familiar with your Medcure and all yeah. those earlier products. Yeah. Uh, especially your Relaxim, which was yeah. a highlight for MQR, yeah. I'm sure. Many years back, coming out with the uh, first uh, sort of a specific uh, lytic uh, therapy. And uh, this uh, Exafib is probably uh, going to take your stocks rocketing. Thank you, sir. Because, Thank you. Uh, I think 2.5 is an extraordinary introduction. I think Compass data clearly tells us that uh, the uh, stable coronary artery disease patient uh, who have multiple risk factors, so they would be sort of a, a group of patients who will clearly believe. So diabetic with peripheral artery disease, diabetics with uh, uh, chronic kidney disease, and uh, stable cases who have had an infarct many years back. I think there is a huge subset, and uh, the COMPASS data has shown a tremendous uh, benefit in 2.5. I'm sure all of you are aware uh, of uh, River Oxaban in 20 milligram and 15 milligram exafib. So we are really looking forward to introduction of uh, exafib. Thank uh, you, sir. Yes. Thank you, sir. So uh, at the same time, I would like to extend my sincere thanks to our course director, Dr. M. S. Hiremat, sir, who is uh, uh, meticulously taking this module by module, and we are now eighth module, very successful. I also thanks, uh, uh, thank uh, Dr. Jabir, sir, who is also moderating each module, adding his comments, making this program worthwhile. 
Dr. Onkar, Onkar, there was one question in the chat box. Uh, I don't know how many of you saw that. When you are using uh, lytics, uh, systemic is better than local. Local, yes, sir. Yes, I don't know uh, if there is any kind of data to this uh, if, uh, sort of study. Yeah. Or I, I don't know why this comment came because if I'm in the cath lab and if I see a thrombus, I would go local, uh, uh, intralesional. And if I'm outside, if I'm not in the cath lab, I would go intravenous. It's, it's yes. like that for us. Yes. But, but I think every time I have used it, uh, the dose is very small when you are giving it intracoronary. Yes. So it's something like five milligram. You give it slowly. You see the clot dissolving in front of your eyes and probably you need, need not give more. But if it doesn't dissolve, you can give in short boluses of say 2.5. Yes. And then this should be followed by a small intravenous dose, something like five milligram or 10 milligram. So this uh, we have very, uh, very done uh, fairly often when the thrombus is recent and we are finding it resistant. Like you suck out, again, it re reforms. In these kind of setting, uh, many times we use uh, intracoronary uh, uh, GP blockers, but uh, this would be another area where interventionists should remember that uh, intracoronary uh, lytics with uh, elaxin, uh, we found it very, very useful. Yes, thank you, sir. Thank you very much. So I also thank uh, all the uh, case presenter who brought their important cases and interesting cases for the larger audience. So with this note, uh, we stop for today's program. We'll meet on 26th of December uh, with three more cases. So till then, please uh, tune to us for 26th. Thank you very much and uh, wish you a good evening and great time. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you.